Hi, I'm David Katzmeyer from CNET, and this is the Samsung PNE 550 series. I'm standing next to the 51-inch version. This TV also comes in a 60 and a 64-inch size. This review will apply to all three. This is Samsung's least expensive plasma TV for 2012 to feature smart TV and 3D features. We'll talk about those in a little bit, but first I'll talk about something else that distinguishes this TV from its higher-end uh, brethren. That's the uh, bezel around the edge. It's glossy black and a little bit thicker than seen on some of the higher-end Samsung plasmas. Not too bad looking, however. There's also this nice transparent edge and the uh, transparent stock that supports the TV and allows the TV to swivel. Uh, of course, it's a glass top stand to complete the look, which is pretty slick in my opinion. Samsung Smart TV Suite is probably the most capable on the market, unless you count Google TV. This TV has hundreds of apps uh, available in the app market. Of course, the video ones are the ones you care about, and the most important video one is actually HBO Go, which is an exclusive to this television, so HBO subscribers can use the HBO Go app to stream pretty much anything in the HBO catalog. The app really works very well, and I appreciated the navigation and the search, which is an improvement on Roku's app. Uh, all told, it's a really nice app to use, but again, limited to HBO subscribers. This set is missing Amazon Instant but it does have all the other major uh, apps including Netflix, uh, Vudu, and YouTube which are all, you know, again, pretty well integrated into the set. Samsung Smart TV interface is a little bit crowded. You can customize it, but one of the things you can't do is get rid of uh, these proprietary apps here which include Family Story and a few other relatively content heavy, but again, Samsung proprietary apps. TV also has a built-in web browser, which if you use the standard remote control is really painful to use. Samsung does sell a $99 optional keyboard, however, that does make web browsing a little bit easier. Like all other Samsung 3D TVs this year, it includes two sets of 3D glasses. That's a step up from most of the other major manufacturers that don't include any 3D glasses with their active TVs. Uh, the glasses don't fit all that well, however, especially if you're using prescription lenses, but again, they're free. You can buy additional pairs for 20 bucks a piece. Samsung connectivity is standard. There's three HDMI inputs, two USB inputs, and a component video input. There's no PC input, but I don't consider that a major omission. Samsung's picture settings on this set include two-point grayscale. It doesn't have the 10-point or the color management system found on higher-end Samsung TVs. It also has a cinema smooth setting, but we really didn't find that to do anything, unlike the step-up TVs where it does improve film cadence. That takes us to picture quality, which on this TV was very good. Uh, the black levels are nice and deep, but not quite as deep as we've seen on some competing similarly priced Panasonic plasmas, so that's actually a point against it if you're comparing between the two. Color is also very good on this set, and we appreciated the off-angle and uniformity characteristics which, as we'd expect from Plasma, were pretty much perfect. On the downside, the bright room picture quality of this set is, again, less than some of the other higher-end Samsung TVs and Panasonic TVs we've seen. It really doesn't reject that ambient light as well as a lot of screen finishes, so you end up with a little more washed-out appearance to the picture and brighter lighting. 3D picture quality was also a little bit disappointing. There was too much crosstalk compared to a lot of the competitors. That's a quick look at Samsung's PNE 550 Plasma TV. I'm David Katzmeyer.